All right, guys, it's absolutely a beautiful day. We got the skid steer, the greater attachment. We're down here on the farm, and we got close to a half mile of driveway that we're going to try to uh, work out, make smooth, eliminate potholes. Yeah, however you want to say it. Let's get it started. All right, guys, before we get too carried away getting started on this road, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little before drone flight. You can tell from all the water sitting in the fields there. We had quite a bit of rain the day before. I believe this road is just shy of 3,000 feet. I've measured it before, but it's been a while since I measured it. Accesses our um, storage building for the farm and all the grain operations and stuff. But you can see all the potholes and just uh, they've been hauling turkey manure in and out of here for fertilization. And it's just really got this road be beat up between hauling the turkey litter in, hauling all the grain out this winter. Uh, road's been here for a long time, and you can just see it's in a... In the need for some maintenance and we had some time to do it so uh, that's going to be the project for today is uh get this thing whipped back into shape so so let's get the uh, skid steer unloaded and we'll make it happen watch out Right, guys one of these days maybe i need to do an entire video over how i go about operating this greater attachment i've got enough experience on it now i kind of feel like i got a little bit of a grasp on how it works but uh basically what i do is, is i put the the arms of the loader or the skid steer all the way down uh we're down against the locks and then i'll tilt the bucket or tilt the mounting plate forward to where it just puts a little bit of pressure on those front wheels and uh, it seems to do a pretty good job of uh our cutting grade and, and maintaining there those wider tires we put on the front uh, definitely help a little bit the float attachment or the float option on my skid steer is still not working and uh, grading a road like this <clears throat> excuse me grading a road like this i think it may be a little bit beneficial just to kind of let it float but if you're actually trying to cut grade on a pad i don't think you'd want the float option i think you would definitely want it uh, locked into place but it, it works pretty good for us um, i'm always open to ideas or suggestions so if you guys got much experience on these or maybe got some pointers for me are some pointers for some people watching uh, don't be shy about uh, comment down below and let me know but this is uh, definitely proved to be a very handy tool to um, have in the uh, arsenal for us all right guys stop just a second and give you some things to look for uh, when you're grading a row maybe some ideas or whatever but uh, your enemy is water no matter what you're doing your enemy is water and what happens is <clears throat> and this is a good example got a pothole over here with water in it Every time a car comes through here and smashes down through that, that uh, water, it, it almost turns that water into a pressure washer. It's like high pressure underneath that tire. It just blows all the dirt and rock out of it. And then the hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually you're looking for parts for your car that fell off. So this section of the road right here is the worst. And the reason why it's the worst is it's the one spot where the road is lower than the field. Uh, up there, the road is higher in the field, pretty good shape. Back there behind me, the road is higher than the field pretty good shape this little section right through here for some reason the road dips now keep in mind this road has been here 60 70 years uh i'm not going to bring a bulldozer in here and do anything crazy it's too wet to do much of anything with the skid steer so basically what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to try to crown the road at least get the water to the edges of the road uh for as long as possible in another five six seven years probably three years we'll we'll just be back in here doing this again uh, unless somebody wants to spend the money to fix it right one day. But if you're building a new road, take the time to get the road elevated, 
and get the water off the road. It, it makes all the difference in the world. And then if you get chuck holes to start in your driveway, uh, get them fixed. Because if people drive through them, they just keep blowing out and they'll just keep getting worse and worse and worse. I may try my luck and, I don't know, that's pretty wet. I may try my luck with the uh, greater attachment and go down through there and try to roll that ridge back a little bit. You get it thrown over in the field. It may help a little bit. But uh, yeah, great and tips 101. So basically what I'm doing, I went down one way, went down the other way. I got a six foot wide blade, eight foot wide road. So my wind rows, you can see right here, don't end up right in the center. But I'll go both ways. Try to get the base, uh, get all the major holes filled in, get any major imperfections done, get the base looking pretty good. And then whenever the rock trucks come in to spread, they can do a better job because they're not dodging chuck holes and worried about their bed flopping over and all that stuff. And uh, then once they get that rock done, it makes my job even easier because then we can level it out pretty good. So, all right, stop yagging. Back to grading. Let's roll. I'll tell you what the more i use that blade and the more i get used to it the more i'm impressed with it uh it's not ideal but i was able to get this rolled away uh, a lot more than what i thought i was going to it's still it's not perfect but man i'm uh, i'm tickled to death with it for what it is i mean it's it's a farm access uh still want to do it right and make sure it holds up as long as possible but I can get that feathered out in the field here in a minute, but I got rock trucks on the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this road ready for rock. So whenever uh, they get here, I'm not holding them up, and we'll come back and uh, feather that out later. All right, guys, there she is. I kind of got, let's just call it roughed in. I've got it all graded. I've got all the major imperfections out of it, the major potholes, uh, any water drainage issues addressed, and uh, everything's pretty good. We're basically, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. There's just not a whole lot of loose rock left on this thing. It's uh, it's been a few years since this road's got any attention, so uh, pretty happy with the way it turned out. Basically, uh, waiting on some rock trucks to show in, uh, show up. Should be here 15, 20 minutes or so, but uh, this greater attachment, 
I've said it a few times, I'm extremely impressed with it. Uh, and the more I use it, the more I like it. There's a few tricks I've learned since I've been using it. One, my float control still does not work on this, the float option. But what I've figured out works pretty good for me is I put the boom all the way down and then I tilt it forward enough to where it just gets a little bit of pressure on those front tires. Uh, and these wider front tires we put on there after uh, Captain Kleeman had his incident, which that wasn't his fault. I don't think those tires are the right ones anyways, but those tires do work a lot better. Uh, but that seems to work pretty good. I have went in here and tweaked on this valve a little bit, um, trying to get it to raise level and uh, not quite be so quick. I just, uh, what I got's not proportional, it's just on and off. And they don't need to move fast. I need to make fine tune adjustments. So basically, uh, I don't know if you can see it. And there may be some of this in a video at some point because Aaron actually did it. But right back in there, I basically welded the hole up in that fitting going into that valve and then I drilled out a certain size. I can't remember what size it was. It may have been like eighth inch. Basically restricted that oil flow and uh, that makes my adjustments a lot more fine tunable. Fine tunable? Is that a word? It's going to be for now. So, but anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm getting used to it and the more I use it, the more I like it. It's, uh, it's, it's proved to be a pretty handy little, little tool for sure. So, uh, I'm going to hang out here for a minute and uh, wait for a rock truck to roll in. And uh, we'll carry on. I think I see a rock truck coming. You think if I stand here in the middle of the highway, he'll get the idea to turn. I sure hope he don't run me over. Here he comes. What's the universal hand signal for that way, please? Brand new 2020 Volvo right there, folks. All right, guys, rock truck showed up and got them swung in here. And I got a few cool shots. Check this one out. This is the nice part about having some old cameras you really don't care about is uh, get really cool shots like this. We'll even slow her down and check it out. I don't know why. I just thought that was cool. But I uh, got the drone up in the air also and got some uh, video of him spreading. Just a few tricks here. One. Uh, if you guys never spread rock before, the first thing is, is to make sure that tailgate is set just right. We're trying to go thin here, so let's set about two inches. Uh, two, the smoother the base is, the better off you are. Three, and probably the most important, is you need to make sure and look you don't have any overhead obstructions. We do have a power line there, but it's not over the road. And uh, you need to make sure there's it's level. There's not no big potholes. You don't want to get this truck, uh, you know, slapping back and forth. And uh, you definitely don't want to turn the truck over. Uh, that'll make for a bad day. As you guys can tell here, we have definitely got a professional driver, which makes all the difference in the world for getting a, getting a nice job. All right, guys, there he goes. I tell you what, uh, that's why I did all that work grading before, and I'm not going to take anything away from him. You know, a good truck driver makes a good makes a big difference too. But uh, look at that, man! It looks awesome down through there. I got to run and do a few other things. He's uh hitting the road he's gonna go after uh we only got one truck hauling today the other truck got pulled off on something else but uh that's all right he'll let him take off uh get in there a little rock and uh we'll come back and go again all right guys it's an absolutely beautiful day if you can't tell and i'm waiting on this load of rock to come in so i decided to be efficient and go down i don't know if you guys can see back there went down and picked up the old 140 we're gonna haul it into the farm here for those of you that watch captain cleman he's hauling out uh scrap metal so i'm gonna go ahead and get it down here he took one load off he's going after took one load off uh coming back to get a second load here at the farm that little building he tore down so i'm gonna haul this machine in do a little uh ditch work load up some uh load up the scrap metal and we're gonna test our road out and see how we've been doing truck and help back the road in a little bit take a drive on her see if there's anything we need to do but uh I'll tell you what so far so good it is way better they're hauling uh turkey crap in up here that's a nice work for it, turkey crap i can already tell the road's in better shape because they're grabbing about two more gears coming here so but uh, let me roll up here and uh get unloaded and hopefully our rock truck will be back in we'll be back on the road
right guys a couple things real quick i don't know for sure uh when you guys will see this video my as you guys know my video is a little a little behind the reason why i do that is i can keep a consistent upload schedule sometimes i video uh three or four maybe five videos a week and some days i'll some weeks i only do one or two so if i keep a backlog i can consistently upload every other day for you guys so that's kind of the i ain't trying to keep anything from you i promise but uh today i don't know what the situation will be whenever you guys uh see this video but today is the day that i hit 30,000 subscribers and i'm getting really close to uh, five million total views and uh Guys, a year ago, a year ago, I had a thousand subscribers and like not even a hundred thousand views. It's just insane. I just wanted to thank you guys for all your support. I hope everybody's enjoying the channel. It's been a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be, and uh, it's opened up some amazing opportunities for me. As you guys seen from uh, Con Expo, I was able to uh, partner and do some stuff with uh, Volvo which is really cool not for sure where that's going to lead to in the future yet but uh it looks promising um uh, i got some talks with some other people i'm working on uh you know ariat clothing uh they sent me some boots and they're actually some high quality boots there's some really cool stuff i love their pants steve from speed Miners, he's been absolutely awesome uh one thing that i want to point out and i hit on this a little bit in las vegas guys is i'm not going to endorse something or promote something that I'm not going to use myself or believe in is a good product. I get, I don't, I, I probably get six, seven, maybe ten emails a week of guys wanting me to promote their stuff, and, and and some of it I am just not going to do. I'm just not going to do. But that's beside the point. That wasn't the point of this conversation. The point of this conversation was, uh, like I said, the day I'm filming this, 30,000 subscribers, almost five million views. Guys, you absolutely blow my mind i i never would have dreamed it would have went this way for us and i couldn't do it I, I love interacting with you guys appreciate all the comments um you guys are what make this too much fun it's too much fun it shouldn't even be legal it's so much fun so anyways we got uh back to work enough of the rambling stuff we have officially got the machine unloaded there's the pile of scrap metal that uh captain needs to load up when he comes back i'm gonna do a few other things with machine wads here and uh, I have kind of taken a liking to this new Volvo. It's uh, I wasn't for sure about it when I first got it, but uh, we're getting along pretty good now. But rock truck should be rolling in any minute, and we'll be back on the driveway, folks. All right, guys, real quick. Speaking of absolutely awesome subscribers, you guys are so awesome. Look what Blake. That's what Blake from Texas sent me. He uh, he didn't think little of the wall up there had enough uh, oof to do what I need to do. I tell you what, this thing right here is bad to the bone. It helps me push the battery all the way in. Oh, yeah, there we go. Check out that thing. Thank you, Blake. This thing's awesome, man. We've been using it quite a bit. I apologize. It hasn't been in more videos, but uh, I'm sure you'll see more and more of it as summer wears on. So cool, so cool.
Well, I'll hop back in this truck. And uh, man, I tell you what, put some of these wild cherry air fresheners in here today. Woo! Wild cherry is an understatement. Them things are so wrong. Yeah. Man. Good thing I have the gas station close. We are on Major E, boys and girls. I'm curious to see, this is the first full tank. Jack not this year. First full tank I've ran all the way through this thing. I have done some uh, towing with it. I'm gonna get another uh, read on my fuel mileage here, kind of see how it compares to the, uh, compares to the old Duramax. Let's see here, we got, uh, I don't know if you guys can see in there. Let's turn the wheel that way. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, 362 miles on a tank of fuel. Uh, with some towing, and I think this thing holds like 25 or 26 gallons when the light comes on. We're fixing to find out. Long trip to the gas station. Long trip. <laughs> it don't have a little thing on it. All right, guys, I just got filled up here. Let's see what we got. So uh, we're 362.7. So I'm going to round that up to 363. And uh, we got 20, let me see out there, 28.5 gallons divided by 12.7. That's not too shabby. I've been getting around 13, 13.3. And I figured with towing, I was going to get a little bit less. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that, to be honest with you. It's actually, I was expecting to be a little bit more. Uh, I'd say about 100 miles of uh, pretty heavy towing on this load. So that's a win for me. It's, uh, I've really been pleasantly surprised how well the old uh, 6 does. But uh, we have got to stop socializing and get back to work. My rock truck's going to be there any minute. So uh, back to the farm we go. Well, made it back down here. Still don't have any rock. But uh, we got a Captain Cleveland. I guess he made it back after his... Uh, a lot of scrap metal. If you want to see that video, you're going to check out his channel. I'm not sure about his parking job there, right in the mud, but it's lovely. I have a question for you. I got an answer. You just can't ask questions without saying hi first. Yeah, uh, you looking at the fire in the ditch? Ain't that something? That is something. Man. Now. Is that your question? Yeah. I figured it out. Well, guys, we got all kinds of activity going on, but none of it that involves a rock truck. I don't know. He must have got lost, but Cleveland's getting scrap metal loaded up. He's uh, sorting through, getting that all sorted up and cleaned out. Uh, they're still hauling the uh, turkey manure in here for uh, fertilizer. I think it's about the seventh or eighth truck uh, they've hauled in. So basically, they dump it here in a pile. I got a level pad here where they dump them frameless trailers out. And then they take the uh, John Deere over there and uh, shove it up. What that is, that is not full, uh, full on turkey crap. I guess that's the most political right way to put it. What happens is around here in our area, we have all kinds of uh, uh, turkey houses and chicken houses and farms and 90 percent of that is sawdust it's the sawdust they put down in the bottom of the house uh, to use for bedding and uh, keep them up off the concrete and then obviously they use the bathroom in it and they get saturated but it's really high in nitrogen i'm not a farmer i'm not even gonna pretend like i know all the ins and outs of why it works but they have to get rid of it and it's <clears throat> high in nitrogen higher in other nutrients nutrients it's good for farming so uh Basically what they do is these farmers buy it or get it or whatever and it's a really cost effective way to uh, fertilize the fields. And they have to haul it when they're cleaning out a barn when they got a house switch. So uh, that's why they don't haul it out and put it straight in the field. Even if the fields are too wet to spread it. So they stockpile it here. Uh, and then as soon as the weather permits, they'll load it in a spreader and take it out and put it on the fields and hopefully grow some uh, good corn and beans and all that good stuff. And uh, in case you're wondering, yeah, it stinks horribly. It is horrendous. It's nasty. But uh, I got nothing better to do but watch a trap trailer be dumped. And uh, Captain Clinton works. So hopefully, next time I turn his camera on, there's a rock truck in the shot. That's the goal. I can't refrain myself. I'm going to do it. Yep. 
That's uh, that's one crappy job right there. <laughs> that's a 7200 John Deere. I think he's got about 15 or 16 thousand hours on that tractor. And somewhere in my social media stuff, somewhere there's a picture of that tractor on its side where we had to flip it back over. But uh, it survived to live another day. He tried to hide it. I found it. What is it? You can't deny it. We got no way shaking his hand. It's a spoon. Fair and square. I found a spoon. Oh boy. He's not gonna be happy about this. I need to run for my life. guys I love water to their little rock he'll be here at some point uh turkey manure is all finished up Clayman's back here turn my back in it's probably not a good idea he's getting trapped now loaded up hopefully we'll have something to do here in a minute that piece is on the truck all right guys good news a rock truck just hopped in we're gonna jump in right along this time. Man, this thing's new, it even still smells new. Yeah, you gonna tell us all your secrets? <laughs> yeah. So two things, don't turn it over and let's not hit the power line. Okay. It's staying on the outside though when we make our turn, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, you got her. We're off. It's always nice to have a new truck where the bed pins aren't all wore out and it's slopping back and forth. Yeah. We're gonna have to explain the chicken. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's your nickname, right, chicken? Yeah. All come from the chicken lines. So how you liking the new Volvo? It ain't too bad so far. I like oh. it good automatic. Yeah, I'd say once you get used to it, it's probably not too bad. Looking good, looking good. I think you've done this before. Yeah, you can get pretty thin around here until you get to just the other side of that curve. Sweet, that's it. Yeah. Hey, we ended up where we we're supposed to too. That's always good. All right, guys, there it is. Second load of rock down. Another load of manure in. Captain Cleveland's going. I'm gonna walk down here. I didn't think this out real well. I rode with the truck driver in here. Hopped out and grabbed my camera. He took off. Now I gotta walk back down the skid steer. That's all right. Pretty sure a little exercise won't gonna kill. Not gonna kill me. But uh, we'll hop in the skid steer and. Uh, Grade this book or out real quick, and by golly, we might just call this one done. All right, guys, nice little hike there. Uh, finally made it back to the skid steer. So what I'm gonna do here is, look at this. I got camera, drones, not counting the one I'm using because you can't see it because I'm talking to it. 
it's a yeah it's been quite a challenge keeping track of everything today but uh i'm gonna hop out here and, and grade this out he did a really good job spreading this rock but it's just a real few small imperfections and basically what i'm gonna do for lack of better terms i'm just gonna kind of tickle the top fill in a few blemishes and uh by golly i think we're gonna call this one good so let's do it Right, guys we're getting close let me kind of show you what i've done <clears throat> ideally we want this road to have a crown in it like this behind the middle and water to run off both sides so while you guys are riding along i had the blade angled and i wind rolled it up this way i wind rolled it up this way so basically i got a high ridge right down the middle so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the blade straight and we'll go down through there kind of knock the top off of it and hopefully it'll roll over on both sides and with a little bit of luck that'll be our final pass and uh we'll call it good so let's see what happens All right, guys we're getting close let me kind of show you what i've done <clears throat> ideally we want this road to have a crown in it like this behind the middle and water to run off both sides so while you guys are riding along i had the blade angled and i wind rolled it up this way i wind rolled it up this way so basically i got a high ridge right down the middle so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the blade straight and we'll go down through there kind of knock the top off of it and hopefully it'll roll over on both sides and with a little bit of luck that'll be our final pass and uh we'll call it good so let's see what happens
while this turned out here next to the uh, road and we filmed that back and uh, it, it, this wind and sun here come out it dried out really nice I got this slightly sloped away so maybe that road won't hold as much water there now I'm really impressed with this grader man it is just uh, the more tricks and stuff I used to it the more I'm impressed with it it is really turning to be a handy tool but let me get back up here at the barn and uh, we'll finish this off with a drone shot like we started it and kind of give you guys a full scope of what we got and uh, call it so off to the barn All right, guys, here's a pretty similar flight. This, <laughs> this video sped up a little bit, so no, that motorcycle's not doing 100 mile an hour across there. But this is the end of the day. I did not, there was actually three rock trucks. I totally missed the uh, last rock truck. I had to go do some other stuff. Uh, he came back, was able to spread without me and get her done. But as you can tell from this flyby, uh, the road is in much better shape. You don't see those big water holes, the big chuck holes. Uh, you can see the big brown strip there where we come in there and did a little bit of work to uh, get that water off the road. This road actually has a, a pretty good base over it. It holds up really good over time. It's just uh, it's just one of those, it's a gravel road and you gotta put rock on it. And, you know, everybody always wonders, well, why do you keep putting rock on these roads? Where does all the gravel go? Well, it goes a couple different places. One, it just gets beat down on the ground. Uh, two, trucks and uh, cars, they throw the rock off the road or get stick in tire, stuck in tires and they carry it off. Uh, but where a lot of it goes is the dust you see behind coming behind these vehicles is just that rock getting broken down and uh, literally getting getting blown away. So it's a gravel road. It just requires maintenance, no different than any other road. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to head on out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Remember, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And guys, we shall catch you on the next one.